Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a fun video. It's a trendy kind of video. I asked you guys on Instagram if you were interested in me doing a video on what's on my iPhone. A lot of you said yes. Here I am filming a video about what's on my iPhone. <laughs> Seven. I haven't upgraded my phone in a while. It's actually paid off. So I'm very happy that this phone is mine I, I have no issues with it. I recently changed the battery and it works like new I am going to start a screen recording. So let's go ahead and get started as my screensaver I have my digital um, vision board for 2020 and I created this using a friend of mine, Fabiola Suarez, for a video on how to create a digital vision board. And I actually really like having it on my phone. It keeps me motivated to keep all my goals for the year in check. I wanted to pass my Creogs and I did. I did a little bit better than I did last year, so that was good. I want to be able to focus on my research project and be able to at least have an abstract before the end of the year so that I can present at a conference. I hope to have 500 YouTube subscribers by the end of the year. I also want to improve my money habits, increase spending, investing, and all of that. And especially with the everything that's going on in the stock market, all of this is a little bit scary. So what better opportunity to learn more about the market and about finances than during a time of recession. I want to learn more about photography. I want to try to get 2,000 subscribers on Instagram. I want to hopefully go to Vegas for the New Year's, get rid of my credit card debt, travel, and drink more water. So once we go into my actual phone, over here at the top corner, and I'm gonna go from left to right, have my messages, my contacts, my clock, and the settings of the phone. Then I have health calendar, reminders, and the app store. Now, after that, I have things that I use fairly common, and I like for them to be in the middle. So that's Amazon Notes, Google Drive, Google Home, Camera, Instagram, Photos, and Google Photos. And if you notice, I've color, kind of color coded all the Google apps and the Photos apps because they all have similar colors. So I like having them all in that little corner. That's also a trick I learned from my friend Fabiola. I'll link her channel down below. You should check it out. And then I have medical. And when we go into medical, I actually have a bunch of resources. So I have ICD-10 consults. So that's a resource for looking at ICD-10. CD10 codes and that's what we use for billing purposes. I have the ACOG app where I can check patients due date um, based on their last menstrual period, uh, ultrasound or reproductive technology. I have practice bulletins and committee opinions which are um, the reading materials that we use to inform ourselves of the patient management, updated guidelines and all of that. Then I have the CDC STD guide which is a really really good app. It talks to you about STDs and their management and have um, all of the different STDs and their management guidelines have the CDC antibiotic guidelines, so which antibiotics can be used or which types of infections, how they work, what they prevent, how to use them for prophylaxis, etc. etc. It's a really good resource for those going into any medical field that deals with antibiotics like internal medicine, surgery, OGYN things like that, family medicine. ASCCP is the American Society for Cervical Cancer Prevention, I believe. And then they go into the screening guidelines and management guidelines for pap smears. So your pap smear is a screening tool that we use to screen for cervical dysplasia, which could be a precursor to cervical cancer. And depending on the result of your pap smear, then we can decide if you need further procedures, if we can continue to watch you. And so this app is really handy when you are seeing a patient and you're unsure of what the management is. It's a really good resource for that. Then we have the CDC contraception app and it goes through all of the contraceptive methods, their contraindications, their recommendations, which patients you can use it for, etc. And it's really, really good when you have a patient who has a lot of chronic conditions like heart disease or coagulation disorders or things like that where you don't know which method will be better for them if they can use hormones if they can't and that app is really useful for that then we have a lactamed which is an app where you can look at different medications and see if they are good during pregnancy and breastfeeding in order for them to be safe for mom and baby during this time. Then we have MD Calc, which is an app that has different calculators and you can look at different things during work. So 
The ones that I use, if we go to my most recent ones, are Bishop Score and BMI, as well as Urine Output, um, because Bishop Score is the one that we use the most on labor and delivery for calculating if a patient has a chance of a successful delivery. Then we have Medscape and Up to Date, which are resources for information. So if you want to read about a certain condition, management guidelines, things like that, up to date research and information, then those are two good resources for that. Then we have the CDC Opioid Guidelines app where you can look at what the guidelines for different prescriptions of opioids are. Then we have an OB wheel, which I don't use as much, but it's helpful in some cases. So it just has a little bit different uses than the ACOG app, but I mostly use the ACOG app. And then we have the NCCN guidelines, which is the Cancer Society nationally. We use it a lot in gynecology, oncology to look at different management algorithms, etc. for patients who do have cancer or are being worked up for cancer. Then we go to SOAP. And then in the social tab, we have Facebook, we have Messenger, we have Pinterest, we have Twitter, then we have WhatsApp, we have Snapseed, which is an app which you can edit photos. So you can use different, you can learn how to do different things and it's a free app. It's actually pretty good. This is what I use to edit most of my um, Instagram photos as well, as well as PicMonkey. I also have the files app in here because I store a lot of my blog and Instagram and YouTube files in there so that way I can have easy access to them in the same area. Then we had WordPress, which I used to use a lot when my I was very active on my blog, which I haven't been, and I hope to be able to retake it again in the near future. Then we have Shop Style Collective, which is an app, basically affiliate links for fashion and jewelry, things like that. I can create different widgets for my blog. I can create links for, for my blog, for Instagram, for the description box here on YouTube, etc. That way I can link you guys to what I'm wearing or items that I mentioned that I can link to there so that you can look at them. Then we have the Like to Know It app, which is also kind of like a social app. You can shop the people that you follow, you can see their outfits, and then they link all the products in the photo so that you can purchase them. So it's also kind of like an affiliate link. I don't have a Like to Know It like account in the sense that I can't share my pictures from within Like to Know It and link you guys to that. Then we have Influencer, which is a platform where you can review makeup and food and you can basically review anything and then they also send you packages with like PR products for you to try and review. So that's where I've gotten a lot of products that you guys have seen on my Instagram. Then we have Boomerang and Layout, which are Instagram apps. We have Shop Tagger, which is an app where you can browse whatever website and then if you see an item that you like and you want to wait for it to go on sale, you can save it to Shop Tagger. It will send you a notification or an email when an item comes back in stock, it goes on sale, etc. so that you can take advantage um, of the sale and get it at a better price. Then we have Over, and Over is an Instagram, mostly an editing app for Instagram stories. It's actually really easy to use. I like their platform a lot and it allows me to create really cool videos for my stories, like some of the my Insta story pictures, like this one. I don't know, I feel like it's really easy to use and it's very user friendly, it's very useful. I feel like I've said useful a lot. I also have Snapchat just for the sake of having it. I don't really use it. Sometimes I open it and I have like a bunch of messages from my two best friends and my husband and they're like months old. The next app that I have is Story Art and then this app is also an Instagram Story Art and with this one I created the promo video for my Puerto Rico vlog which has been like my favorite Insta story of all time and I will insert it um, right here if I can. I don't know, I just love um, how that came out. I can't even remember like all the stuff that I did to make it that way, but it just looks so beautiful. I, I really enjoyed it. Then we have Later is an app that you can use to schedule and organize and plan your grid on Instagram. I've tried a lot of apps and I think it's one of the easiest ones to work with. I like that it has a desktop version. So now that I'm trying to work a little bit more on my Instagram, I'm probably going to be using it a lot more. I have Visco, which I don't really use that much. I sometimes use it for specific pictures because they have some filters that I actually do like, some presets, and I use those, but it's very, very rare that I do. When we have QuickTime, and uh, the only reason I have this is so that I can do screen recordings, but I don't really know why I keep it because I don't really use it anymore, so I'm probably going to delete it. We have 
Poshmark and I have my Poshmark closet linked down below. I put a lot of things on sale recently, um, so if you want to check it out, check the description box down below. We have Netflix, Tumblr, which I don't really use anymore, and TikTok, which I downloaded recently just to follow some of my role models. Then we have the YouTube box, which I have YouTube Studio, which is the creator studio from YouTube. I can have access to all of my um, videos, all of the comments, uh, all of my analytics and all of that. And I have the YouTube app and YouTube Tracker. YouTube Tracker is an app that allows you to track how close you are to getting the monetization privilege on YouTube. So I want to work towards that in the future. I have the app. I have the iMovie app just in case I ever need to edit some videos on my phone. Then we have Canva, which is where I edit most of my thumbnails for YouTube and for my blog. I really like having it on my phone. It allows me to download pictures really easy edit them on the go and things like that. Then we have Capture, which is what I use to do screen recordings. And then we have the Canon app, which I can't remember why I downloaded it. Because I have a Canon camera, but I don't think it has the connectivity to this. Then in the utilities tab, we have the calculator, the compass, measuring tape, voice memos, stocks, weather app, FaceTime, Dropbox, and Genius Scan. Genius Scan is a app that allows you to take photos, convert them into scanned documents, and then you can send them over via email, text, or anything like that. Then I have the Emojis app, Find My Phone, Apple Home app, PDF Master, Wemo, which is an app for the little smart plugs. I got one for my husband last year and I downloaded the app. I don't really use it that much, but in case that I wanna set something specific on my phone, then I have access to it. I have my countdown for graduation, and then I have the Dave & Buster's app because we went to Dave & Buster's and it was really easy to reload your playing card on the app. That's the only reason that I downloaded the app. Then I have entertainment and I have all of my games here. I have Pokemon Go, I have Blood Doku, Property Brothers, which are my current favorites, as well as 2048. Then we have lifestyle where I have just a bunch of apps for day to day. So I have Apple Music, Books, Google Maps, Stow Card, which is an app that allows to store all of your like rewards cards in there and the pages, Bitmoji, Wallet, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Mint, Discover, Venmo, Orion, which is my brokerage account manager, Nelnet, Amex, GC, which is my bank, TD Ameritrade, which is where I have my Roth IRA, Banfield, which is Bella Nuvet. I have DrySense, which is our car insurance. With eSurance, I have Wedding Party, which is an app that basically that's the app that I chose to have all of my wedding pictures from the guests. So I'll have the app so I can see all the pictures. Then I have Rakuten, which is used to be Ebates, so I can track all of my cash back from different purchases. This is a Target app, favorite app, Touch Tunes, which is an app for the little jukeboxes. And I have Outlook, which I use for my work email. Zealy, which is an app that I recently got because one of my, my attendings was paying me back for food. Kind of like Venmo, but different, like it's through your bank. The Vino, which is a like a wine review app. So you can review wines, look up wines and their recommendations, and you can see your what your friend's favorite wines are. Then I have my 23andMe, where I can see my results, share it with people. Headspace, which is a meditation mindfulness app. Then I have my fitness pal, which I use whenever I want to count my calories. Then I have work and these are all apps that we use in my program or at the hospital. Vortex Cortana, which is kind of like a chat. Amion is like a scheduling thing. My tip report is our evaluation for a procedure. HIPAA Bridge is an instant messenger for communicating for other people in the hospital. This runner is where we keep our patient list. Feelink is a program that we use from Cerner. Monitor our babies. CPT Mobile is a reference for CPT codes, so for procedure codes. Slides is basically a PowerPoint app. Power my basically so we can use Dragon Dictation. So I can dictate my notes on my phone. PowerPoint is the next app. And we go into travel and then I have all of my airlines, kayak, Uber. Hopper is an app that allows you to search for flights, track flight prices and things like that. Google and Google Entertainment is for when you're on American Airlines flights, you can um, use their entertainment. I think you can use it for Delta as well. Then we have Airbnb and Waze. We have Lyft and JetBlue. We are almost done, I promise. Then we have podcast apps, shortcuts, Fem. Fem is a new app that I downloaded. So if you guys have seen other of my videos, you know that I talk about fertility awareness method. If you saw my week in my life videos, then you will know that I've been having a lot of symptoms surrounding my period. I've been getting a lot of pain. I've been getting a lot of my symptoms from like before I had my IUD. I talked to a few of my doctors and they recommended that I start tracking my cycles again. Fem is a charting app. I have the Domino's app, which I have deleted and re-downloaded multiple times because I'm obsessed with their wings. And 
that is it you guys that is it basically um that's what i have on my iphone i don't plan on changing my phone anytime soon even though i am obsessed with the pictures from the iphone 11 my phone works just fine i really don't need to go spend money on a new phone i'm trying to be more savvy with my spending even though i don't really spend that much money um so i'm trying to save more invest more and basically just set myself up for success financially give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it um let me know in the comments below what your favorite apps are i may try a few of them out tell me if you use any of the apps that i use and which one is your favorite follow me on social media and subscribe to my channel in the link down below remember to click the little notification bell to be notified every time i upload a video i am super active on instagram you can follow me day to day that is it you guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye guys